Hi, Pastor Sammy and all of my wonderful friends in the Philippine Islands. I'm so glad to be with you at this Bible conference. I just wish I could be there in person more than anything else. And I look forward to being with you very soon. Amen. <laughs> when Pastor Sammy contacted me and told me the theme of this conference was, Who will go for us? Who shall we send? I realized that I was going to be at a very special place right around this time. So today I drove over to this place where I'm at, and behind me is a monument. It's a monument to what is called the Haystack Prayer Meeting. What happened is five young men, let me see what date, in 1806, five young men who were going to go to the college that was right around here were walking in a field. This is now a park, but it was a field then. And they were talking about reaching Asia for Jesus and taking the gospel to Asia because uh, in, in London, a few years before, William Carey had gone to India and had challenged uh, the British people and the Europeans to take the gospel to the world. Missions was not done much at that time, and America had not had any official foreign missions. These five young men were walking in this park right here, and they were talking about that and discussing it when a rainstorm came. So they got, they got into a haystack. A haystack was kind of like a teepee pointed upward on a, on a wooden foundation and had a kind of a carving out in the middle so it wouldn't, the hay wouldn't rotten. And these guys were, went into that haystack and kind of crowded in together so the rain wouldn't hit them, and they began to pray. And out of that haystack prayer meeting that day, the burden and the vision was placed in their hearts to send missionaries around the world, especially to Asia. And uh, a couple of years later, they formed an organization. And then a few years after that, they sent the first missionary from America to India, Adonayan Judson. When he got there, he couldn't end up staying there, so he ended up in Burma. And Adonai and Judson went to Burma seven days after he got married. Can you imagine? They went to Burma, faced all kinds of hostility. He was put in prison. His wife eventually died there and, and many other things. It took, after six years, he didn't even have one convert. Only after six years did he get one convert. But he stayed there until he was 60-some years old. And history says that, he, le that uh, he left for Asia in his early 20s and, uh, uh, and he didn't have a convert for six years. But soon after his death in 1850, when he was 63 years old, they estimate that there were 210,000 Burmese Christians. Now, think about it. Right here, at this spot, five young men prayed and made a decision to do something for God. You know, that, that, uh, that speaks to my heart in our subject of who will go, who shall we send? Because that's what they were saying right there, and they were, what they were praying about. And history is important, and monuments like this monument there to Samuel J. Mills and the other four guys, uh, monuments to them of uh, what happened at this spot. Tells me something, and I want to give to you right now. Number one, it reminds us the importance of small beginnings. You may be in a small place right now. You may seem insignificant, but how insignificant was this? Just at a prayer meeting in a haystack, no church, no supernatural power was manifested no miracles happened. All they did was gather together and begin to talk about it and begin to have a vision for seeing missionaries go out and plant churches and spread the gospel into the world. So it reminds me about small beginnings. You know, how a small seed that's planted uh, can grow and multiply and produce a harvest. Now for over 200 years, missionaries have been sent from this country from the very foundation that happened right here. So it reminds me of the power 
of small beginnings. The second thing is it reminds me of the influence of your preaching and your example. See, uh, from this, Samuel, Samuel uh, Mills was probably the most influential of the men that were a part of this prayer meeting. And uh, he was the one that proposed that in that haystack that uh, we send the missionaries, our missions to India. He made a, a famous statement here that said, we can do it if we will. We can do it if we will. You know that they say that Mills was a poor student at the, by, at the seminary here at the school. And he wasn't even allowed to participate in the graduation ceremonies. So God took a mediocre student with a radical passion. Did you hear that? A mediocre student with a radical passion for the nations. And he changed the world. Think about it from this spot right here. And uh, Adonai and Judson went and many other hundreds more begin to go. By the time Judson died, they say that there were 63 churches and 123 missionaries in Burma alone. So this reminds me, as I said, about the power of small beginnings. And number two, that reminds me of the influence of your preaching and your testimony. See, Samuel uh, Mills here had a testimony, and I'll share it in just a minute. He was a preacher's son, but he had a testimony as he went and he, he was the motivation behind hundreds of more missionaries going. And the testimony of William Carey all the way over in England stirred these young men to want to do the same thing. So your testimony of what you do, how you live, where you go, and how you give yourself to God, and the uh, preaching of the gospel to challenge hearts to want to go into all the world, to want to plant churches, and want to be the ones to go. Number three, it reminds me of the importance of prayer. You often uh, forget how important prayer is. And many times, you know, it's hard to get people to come to prayer. Prayer meetings seem to be the smallest meetings in the church. But here was a prayer meeting with only five men. And it wasn't anything supernatural happening that in the natural eyes could see. But they were praying for the nations. And it shows you what can happen when people pray for the nations and pray for cities, pray for workers. Jesus told the disciples, pray the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into the harvest field. And in our text, the scripture says, who will go for us? Whom shall we send? And of course, uh, uh, the prophet said, I will go. Amen. Send me. And uh, here we are seeing here the importance of prayer. Even if it's two or three people, Jesus said, that are gathered in his name, praying or worshiping, they, he is there in the midst. So prayer is critical to sending. You want to send and want people to go, we need to pray that the Lord of the harvest will send people into the harvest field and that people will go into the harvest field. Then it reminds me also of the need of workers workers. He says, pray that the Lord will send workers. We've, that's our prayer forever. For God send workers into the harvest field. Church planters, it's God working together with us hand in hand. God gave us the commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And it's hand in hand that we do this with God. We put forth the effort, we sacrifice, we're willing to go and God supernaturally enables us and blesses us and helps us. So there is the great need of workers going into the harvest field. And number five, it challenges us to keep persevering, to keep on going. This is two, over 200 years after these young men were in this spot under a haystack praying that uh, we're still sending missions the gospel is still going forth, and we still remember these young men. They probably thought what they did was insignificant. They probably thought nobody will ever know what we've done. Well, they never even thought about that, about this prayer meeting going down in history, our memorial being built to this prayer meeting. I doubt they even thought about that. But here we are, two, over 200 years later, we're still sending. 
We're still praying that God will send people. We're still in small places doing what appears insignificant to the world, the world not paying attention to us. But nevertheless, what we're doing is changing the world. What we're doing is making a difference. Think about it. The first missionaries to go into Asia and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in the modern world, and it started here with some young men. Maybe you're a young man, young woman, right now. And you feel what you're doing is insignificant. You feel what you're doing doesn't count. Let me tell you, they probably felt the same way. Samuel Mills, he, as I said, he was he was uh, insignificant uh, in, in, the, in the eyes of people. He was not even allowed to participate in the graduation because he was a mediocre student. He wasn't the number one. He wasn't the hottest guy in town. He wasn't the most talented person in town. None of them were. In fact, it tells us that. But they had a passion to go and a passion to plant. Amen. So that was in 1806 and the world didn't notice nothing happening. The world didn't know that they were there at that prayer meeting, didn't pay any attention, but the Lord did. And because of their prayers, because of their prayers, laborers were sent. Because the laborers were sent, the gospel was preached. And because the gospel was preached, amen, people were saved. Amen. Isn't that exciting? So let, let me leave something with you. One, God uses people in the middle of nowhere to plead for the souls of people everywhere. Let me say that again. God uses people in the middle of nowhere. This was just a field back in those days. In the middle of nowhere to, to plead in prayer for his souls everywhere. Amen. For the gospel to go forth. And God uses people who are young to stir up people of all ages. These men were in their 20s, in their 20s when they went out to preach. They weren't old. Samuel Mills died in his early 30s, but yet he made an impact on the world. Think about it. So God uses people, number three, who are few in number, few in number to gather a unlimited harvest. Hallelujah. God uses a few great churches were started with a few people. Mandalorian Church in, in, uh, there in Manila, when Sammy and I were working together along with some of you right there that were in that church, it was a handful of people, 25 people, and even less than that in the upper room, what we call third floor of the Peso Bank. Just a small group of people. And look at what the God has done now in these years all over the Philippines and all over Asia and even in America where you've sent people to preach the gospel. So God uses this insignificant, the invisible, amen, to accomplish his great purposes. So let me tell you something. The next time you see rainfall, take a moment and thank God for the haystack prayer meeting. That these guys jumped in that haystack, crowded together, and began to pray that God would send harvesters into the world, and they took action. You can't just pray. you got to take action. Amen. Pray for young leaders that, uh, that would be willing to risk everything like these men did, to go the unknown, to go into places where people had not been to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they didn't go for fame. They didn't go for fortune. They didn't have either one, fame or fortune but for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the question is not, why should I go, but why shouldn't I go? As, the, as God is speaking there to Isaiah, and he sends to him, who shall I send, and who will go for us? Hallelujah. Isaiah said, here am I, send me. That's the challenge, folks. That's the word that God is bringing out and going to bring out in the days ahead of this Bible conference. So as you're entering into it, think about me standing here today at this spot where five men gathered together to pray that God would send workers into Asia 200 years ago. Then look at your own country. Look at uh, the countries of India and all these places in Asia where there's multiplied millions of people serving Jesus Christ, and it started small. Don't think you are in a small place. Don't think what you're doing is insignificant. You may be in a small village, in a small church with a few people. You don't know 
what God can do from that place. You don't know what God can do from your life in that place. Amen.